Now here's a classic problem that we run into when painting with enamels or lacquers. And it has to do with their reducers or their what they use to thin the paint with. Now this can of paint may have about this much material in the bottom from the bottom up. The rest of it is reducer or thinner which is used which is xylene or tuline, which is used in the application of the paint to make the paint run smooth and then the xylene or tuline or whatever chemicals they use evaporates into the air and that's why it smells so bad but if you get too much of the paint on the old painted surface you can run into a reaction which is right here if you can see what we have here is where the reducer instead of flashing off and going into the atmosphere what it does is it gets trapped underneath the paint and starts to eat into the blue paint and when that happens it, uh, it has a really bad reaction and it crinkles the top of your coat that you don't want and it feels real rough and it's got all kinds of little splits in it it looks like it's uh, it's burned or it's split and this is one of the problems of painting uh, an item when it's cold out you want your you want your item to be 70 or 80 degrees I think it's like a 23 or 24 Celsius and you want the paint whatever the paint to be the same room temperature so that the paint is warm the item is warm the paint goes on warm the reducer flashes out into the atmosphere just into the atmosphere and the paint stays on nice and smooth but if the paint goes on too wet and the reducer stays in the medium and can't escape then what it does is it starts to eat the paint underneath now when you're painting a wheel or, or painting something it's very easy to do if everything works perfect but it's like a brain surgeon or a heart surgeon if something goes south and screws up really bad you gotta know what you're doing to fix it or the wheel dies well the wheel won't die with a patient might so in order to fix this problem here and once it starts you can't fix it once it once you notice it happening and you pick it up and you can see the uh, the paint crinkling there's nothing you can do about it what you need to do you can't you can paint over it if you want to but what it will do is it's, it's real rough right here what it will do is it will just make mountains upon mountains it'll make it rougher and rougher and rougher it won't cover it so what you need to do is you need to get some sandpaper you know, uh, 3M is the best sandpaper here it'll say uh, 3M imperial wet or dry 3M makes the best you make everything for space shuttles things like that this is 1500 grit um, which you, I, I, use, I like to use for the clear now I don't have anything else with me right here over at this house so I would suggest if you're gonna you need to sand that out let the let the let the wheel dry and you'll need to sand it out with a little bit of water I would use um, oh you probably your best bet would be a thousand grit because if you want anything less like 800 grit you just cause too many scratch lines so I'm going to take this 1500 grit and I'm going to put my wheel in the sink and I'm going to uh, um, sand that one area out and show you what it looks like and then we'll we'll put some more paint on it. here's a better look at the reaction and what I've done here if you can see this is I've taken a little q-tip and put some paint in the bottom of this cup and I've daubed it on this area after I've sanded it down 
Now what's happened is the reducer has got underneath the paint again and it's started to lift the paint. This, this happens when if it does start to happen you have to be real careful of that area because it's kind of like an infection. It's real tender I guess and the best way for me to fix a problem like this is to sand it down let it completely dry and then go over it with really really light coats super light coats and just build it up until I've got enough paint built up to where the reducer is not going to soak through it and attack the paint underneath. So I'm going to give it a couple more coats um, outside and if I have more problems with this, this will have to be sanded out again but I'm going to paint the rest of the rim and then I'll, I'll just keep painting it until the rim looks good enough for me and then I will put the clear on and the clear I will sand the clear down a little bit and polish it out but I need to get the base coat on there perfectly I need to get the base coat on here on the inside of the rim and on this side and remember on your on your light paint especially yellow yellow is the worst one for this is that the paint when you go to put it on the edge will shy away from your edges so you want to make sure you get enough paint on these edges here and here and down in here there's all kinds of angles that you need to work with all right i'm going to take it outside and spray a little paint on it and i shouldn't be doing it in sub-zero weather but i don't have any other kind of weather to do it in and i don't have a heated shop that's why uh, when you go into a paint shop they're really really heated and heat stabilized otherwise you can't paint anything in them okay what are you looking at 